Good afternoon, Vince Moore. How are we doing today? Good to hear the energy out there. Um, which takes us to the topic of power. Um, today, I'm going to talk about one thing. And one thing only. Which is the electrical socket. Uh, this electrical socket, while it seems a very humble thing, but it's also the source of most of the tangible work that we do in our life. Uh, be it either listening to Kavitari Singh, or running this computer, or even the lights on top of my head, right? Uh, all we look at the plug point is thinking of putting in the plug and starting the device. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we should think uh, about other things besides this plug in the point. And the empty plug that you see here, it's a chance for you to figure out what else you think about besides plug in head. I talked a little bit about the early years. Uh, so I was a very naughty kid. I was, a, I was a pretty much a brat, uh, very popular with the ladies. And <laughs> actually, not really. That's my sister down there. So, <laughs> um, so as uh, I was growing, uh, I was also fascinated with the concept of uh, power and electricity. Uh, but as the fuzzy uh, picture that you would have seen before of my face, I was also a little fuzzy about the concept of electricity and what it could be used for. Uh, what I saw electricity as when I was a kid was to play video games. Um, if the power went off, I can't play Contra, I can't play Mario, I can't you know, play those video games which I really love in those days. Uh, as I grew up, uh, I also realized that electricity can be used for uh, something else. It also can be used for uh, running music, um, throwing parties, um, listening to my favorite artist, Armin Van Buren is my favorite artist as well. Um, so these are the things that I thought of electricity when I was growing up and when I was a kid. Um, as I grew up and I went to college and I understood the uh, concept of electricity a little more, um, I thought of learning uh, how to uh, do business because I come from a Gujarati family. Uh, so, <laughs> Thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, so, uh, doing and starting a business was pretty much uh, a done thing. It wasn't a question of why, it was a question of when. Um, so, I started thinking about what I wanted to do. So, I realized I need to get some work experience. I went abroad, got some international work experience, uh, studied in Canada, uh, stayed in Canada as well, worked for a youth organization. Then, went the corporate way. I wanted to understand how companies really work. Uh, what is what are the guys, the suits and the guys who are working on computers all day long? Uh, so I joined the corporate outfit, I worked with consulting in KPMG. Uh, I got all that experience. Uh, it was all boiling down to at some point I was thinking about my Gujarati jeans and those jeans uh, were cutting in. So I wanted to start something of mine. I wanted to start a new mindset. It's also a point where I went back to my earlier thoughts, which was fun. Uh, Electricity was very fascinating, right? It's dynamic, it's moving, it's 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 also unknown. Um, what you think of electricity, or what a normal person thinks of electricity, is to run as light. Uh, not really understand how it essentially works, but there's a lot of things that goes behind it. So I was searching for business models and things that are need and uh, need of the country, you know, for the country to be done. Uh, what are the problems uh, on the electrical side? When I was growing up, uh, of course there were no blackouts, as all of you would have experienced at some point in time. Um, now the reason for the blackouts were twofold. One, there wasn't enough power in the country. So basically there wasn't enough power to supply, uh, meet the demand and that's why there were blackouts. Uh, the second reason also was that besides not just being enough power, a lot of power is also wasted. Uh, it's not utilized power. And you don't have that clarity of where it's being used, where it's being wasted, etc. Which is what brought me to uh, starting my own company called Eco Limited Energy. Uh, it was, I started the company with my uh, brother, who was also the picture in the previous one. Uh, and we basically were focusing on developing smart grid infrastructure for the development world. Smart grid, uh, talking about smart grid two and a half years back wasn't really very smart because uh, people didn't understand the concept of smart grid. Uh, the concept of smart grid essentially, very simply put, was adding a layer of software and sensors 
on top of the existing power distribution layer. Be it from the thermal power station with light source or bulb, all the distribution transformer which distributes power into your city. The idea was to make it smarter. Uh, if you generate two watts of power at a power station, only one watt of power reaches you to light this bulb. One watt actually gets wasted in the transit. That's a lot of wasted power. And you can do that if you manage the power distribution more effectively. So we, you know, worked on uh, developing infrastructure, developing solutions, figuring out what is the need of the country, and you know, uh, the first person we got was, was the Gujarat Secretary. The Gujarat Secretary was a very, very tough project for us to get. Uh, as I said, talking about smart grid wasn't very smart in those days, you know, three, four years back. Um, so we had to actually convince the bureaucrats and the politicians to actually invest in a pilot, which can be shown at a public place. Um, and actually get, you know, mileage and prove that smart grid technology in India can work. Um, so we did this first project. I had to sit outside Bureaucrat's office for six hours at a stretch and the, uh, the watch, the, the peons would come and say, Sabaj me. So I had to go back again in the morning, you know, sit outside again for, you know, four hours and figure out how to get the project in. We finally got it done after one and a half years. It was the first smart grid project in the country. Uh, it was a success story which, uh, uh, which was there because it was developed for Indian conditions by Indian innovators um, and in Indian and working successfully in Indian conditions. We got a new house. Uh, our new house was the Center of Innovation, Incubation, and Entrepreneurship at IMM as well. Uh, the company actually got selected as one of the uh, innovative companies in the power sector uh, focusing on Indian uh, problems. And we were not a few selected, so we got our offices based up there. We still have offices down there, but we're becoming too big now, so we're kicking it out of the campus. Um, the system architecture, what we were proposing, and what we're still working on, is very simple. The concept is that all energy that we consume at any point in time should be monitored. So what we do is, you know, we set up a layer of sensors at every point. We, on a city-wide level, so I could know the consumption of the transformers in each area of the city, or it could be knowing the power consumption of a specific device or uh, equipment in the factory. All that data wirelessly goes through a cloud-hosted server, from where I can access it from anywhere. So actually from my cell phone, I can know the power consumption of the whole city of Amdurwal, and even the ability to control remotely uh, if I want. Uh, that is the power of big data. Now, it gets very exciting what you do with it. Because now we have all this consumption data and we're figuring out what to do with that data. It's, it's terabytes of data coming to you every day. Now, that data is used by uh, industry. can be useful for him to do energy efficiency. Uh, and there was a story uh, which basically uh, he installed. This is our first installation. Um, these were the early adopters. The owner of this factory was very excited because uh, I told him that you can get the power consumption of your factory on your cell phone. Very good. Let's install it. How much does it cost? So I told him it costs like you know, 30, 40, 100 rupees. I didn't even know how much to tell him because he didn't know actually how much it costs. Um, so I told him 30, 40, 100 rupees. So he put it there. He didn't get the application for the next six months because he was busy developing the application. I just told him something which I didn't even develop. Um, so he got it. He was happy. Um, but he, he got something really uh, exciting out of it. He found out that there was a pump which was installed very far away from his office. And that would be turned on at 4 o'clock in the morning and switched off at 7 o'clock in the morning for, uh, you know, running the, pumping the water. The guy who was supposed to switch on and switch off used to sleep off. So what he used to do is you switch it on during 12 o'clock in the night and, you know, come back at 7 o'clock in the morning and switch it off. Now he got to know that, you know, there was this kind of information happening, there was this kind of issues happening. He stopped this and he got return of investment for the, you know, 30, 40,000 bucks that he invested in. I think one and a half months. Uh, so that was where we started off from. We have now uh, a couple of products in our pipe uh, tank called Smart Sense, which is wireless uh, cloud hosted monitoring system. Uh, we have around 100 customers across the country. This is a live snapshot of all our customers across the country where we monitor the power consumption in real time. And I can even figure out how to uh, give SMS alerts and email alerts. We are also developing smart microgrids. Uh, this is used for electrifying villages, which don't have power. Um, 
the concept is to supply, manage supply and demand effectively so that we can make that whole village self-sufficient without any power from the electricity grid. And that is how India is going to be electrified. But having said that, it's also the big problem still remains. Theft is still there. Power blackouts are still there. And theft and power blackouts can be solved by a very innovative uh, solution, which I'm going to talk about. Um, theft can, of course, be figured out by you know figuring out how the consumption pattern happens and pinpointing exactly where the theft is happening and stopping at that point. But the power blackouts. Uh, now we go back to the first point that I said about the big data. Now we have all that data. What do we do with it? The idea is to link the power distribution company with the consumer and get the consumer to reduce his power consumption during the hours when power is very scarce and actually can be provided to people who need it rather than the big factories who are just consuming for the uh, sake of some processes. So the idea is that it's called demand response. The concept of demand response is that if there are 50 factories in the state of Goa, uh, they would consume around 45% of the power of the whole state. Now during a peak hour when there's a blackout in the in the Panjim area, um, I can actually tell these factories to reduce their power consumption by 5%. And it's 5% decrease in power consumption by maybe switching off or dimming the light or switching off some non-essential load. I can actually provide that power to the whole city of Panjim because the load of whole Panjim is actually equal to 5% of the total consumption of the industries. That's how demand response essentially works. We did a study uh, just by doing demand response. Uh, the state of Gujarat can stay, saves 2,600 crores uh, by no power generation, just by managing the demand. You can actually save money and not provide blackouts. The concept is called a megawatt. Uh, we all hear about megawatts, gigawatts, all those big numbers that we see to fuel the power consumption of the country. What we are saying is forget the megawatts. Forget the gigawatts. Think about the megawatts where you don't need to generate even one unit of power. You can generate power by reducing your demand. And this power can be generated by switching off your washing machines, your loads, during those specific peak hours when power is really expensive and much in demand. And what we're trying to do is generate power by just managing your consumption. Currently, we have around 400 megawatts of industrial production that we are managing, uh, which means that I can actually generate 40 megawatts at any point in time, which means that I can actually figure out a way to not give a blackout to the whole city of Pandi if a demand is very high. Uh, 50 in the 500 industries in the country consume 45% of the total country's power. If I can generate even 5% through megawatts, I can meet the demand of the whole country and not provide any blackouts. This brings us to the beginning point, the plug point. The next time you look at a plug point, don't think of it as just plugging in your socket and powering the light. Think of it as a way to actually manage your power consumption effectively, reduce your consumption to peak cars, and you plug in that device into your plug point can actually bring you a source of generating power rather than consuming power. Thank you.